Andrea. I'm 31 years old. These are my children. Um, I'm a single mom. I've been a single mom for two years now. Grew up in a very small town, Sealy, Belleville area. I am not born here. I was actually born in Brazil. We moved here when I was about three and I grew up in Houston. I was born and raised in China. Life over there, it's, uh, you know, that's the first generation with one child policy. So every family has one child. I'm Anika. I'm 43 years old. I'm a single mother of four, two boys and two girls. I was born in Cuba in 1968. Right now I'm a truck driver. I grew up in India. My name probably gives that away. Uh, I came to the U.S. to uh, uh, come to graduate school in Massachusetts. A uh, company I work for brought me to Houston for work, and I kind of fell in love with the with the people, the food, the low cost of living, uh, the good weather for the most part. I and my sister Faye are here through adoption. We got here December 2021. We're both from Cameroon in Africa. We both grew up in the Dallas area, met at college um, at Texas A&M, and just yesterday celebrated our 16th wedding anniversary. I think our first date was to Whataburger, so. That's right, and we kept it classy. I guess gonna say, cameras live action. <laughs> I'll say religion was not a very big part of our life. I mean, we attended church intermittently, but it was one hour on Sunday, in and out. I also, by nature, am a, I'm a lifelong accomplished control freak. I like to be orderly and neat and structured, and I want to feel like if there's a problem, I can fix it. And two years after I was born, my mom died. That's when she passed away. And then we just been staying with our dad because like our, my dad really took the place of my mom and my dad. Was born in a uh, communist countries are pretty secular. Christianity is mostly prosecuted. So I was born in a family that had no Christ. I used to say it's a lack of respect to human intelligence to say there is a God. You know, I didn't really have a lot of relationship with my parents and so I moved out. Uh, uh, my house to go to a boarding school at the age of 13. So my life hasn't been very easy since then. And it's a lot of rocky, a lot of uh, trauma. You know, we grew up in this very competitive uh, environment and then just, you know, one job, 3,000 people could fighting for it. I had to work six jobs to be able to survive in Shanghai, just chasing after success. But like, there's a big hole in me. You know, I felt like my life was in the wilderness. The first, you know, couple of years of your family, you really tried to, you know, build. And I uh, was traveling for about 10 years back and forth with, you know, in multiple uh, states and countries. I was doing it alone and for quite a while. Was, yeah. <laughs> and so she was, she, she was tough. I was just going through the motions. I'm raised in the church all my life. Had a personal relationship with God. When I was 16, I experienced, um, some trauma that sent me down the road to um, drinking and using to forget what happened. Uh, I was raised a Hindu. The belief was there's multiple paths to God. Uh, I wasn't hostile to uh, any faith in particular, but, but I always questioned Hinduism as you got unlimited gods and belief systems and anything is really okay. And it's all about a, a bunch of tradition and uh, things that you do. We went through a phase of career change that caused me to realize what was most important to me. Faith, I might have said it was top on the list, but it was really seventh or eighth on the list. And I, you know, Sarah and I experienced this together and it was in the fall of 2020 when after what had been a couple of year long season of career related stress and anxiety in our life, I finally hit a total surrender moment. I got pregnant at 19. We were married for five years, um, very abusive. He was always cheating on me. I mean, just <laughs> everything you could go through. Um, to destroy a woman, it happened to me. So I left when she was five, and um, I was a single mom, scared, didn't know where to go, didn't like really have my, my family's help because they kind of felt like, well, we told you, we warned you, we told you this is gonna happen. And within six months, I was with another man, and that was my son's father. So I just ran to another man because that's kind of all I knew to do, and I didn't know how to be on my own as an independent woman, especially with two kids. So there we have a church in the school 
I went there to pray, and it was so strange because like I never really sit and think about my mom or like why she died or like why she had to leave us or stuff like that. And then I just started crying. I never really cried about the death of my mom, like never. And then I just had this feeling like, what if my dad left us too? And then like a week after, my friend is coming up to me in class and she's and he's like, oh, I heard your dad passed away. And I'm like, no, you don't talk about stuff like that. It was like, I'm being for real, your dad is dead. You know, I didn't want to believe it. I didn't even believe him at all. Like that could never happen. My brother, my brother was like, oh, I want to tell you guys something. And we're like, what? And he was like, dad had to go. He has done a lot for us, but his time had reached for us to leave us. And then I ran to his room to check if he was actually there, but I didn't see him. I was like, why did God have to do this? Like, he took mom, and they had to take dad too. You know, it was hurting me. I was so confused. Because, like, my dad was like my best friend. He died October 27th at around 10 p.m. I came as an immigrant with uh, $800 in my pocket and wanted to be an American and assimilate and find out what makes this country tick, what makes it the, uh, the best place for liberty and freedom and, and for people to pursue their dream. And the more I studied documents and books, read you know, literally over 100 books and talked to people and history, it would all lead me back to the, their biblical faith and their worldview of Christianity is what caused them to think correctly and create these systems and behave on balance uh, in a better way, which created amazing prosperity and, uh, and a lifestyle for people, which still people from all over the world want to come here. It was, it was a struggle uh, living in Cuba, especially at that time, it was rough. Uh, we had nothing. I would come home from work and I would not even have soap to have a shower. It is literally oppression. I mean, people talk about slavery, and <clears throat> communism is a, a system of slavery. You are enslaved by the government, and they can literally take your life anytime they want. There's nothing you can do about it. The government is it's abusive and tyrannic, and, but you cannot say anything. I mean, your neighbor can snitch you, and the next day you'll be in prison. Underground church uh, uh, is it's still and it was illegal you know the government said if you want to you know free religious freedom you can go to church we built churches for you we staffed the pastors for you and we screen their scriptures for you as well their their sermons for you as well so i did not follow christ at all at that time i wanted to but i didn't know how i was in a very very abusive and controlling relationship i mean he stripped everything away from me i had no friends i my Family. I didn't even talk to my family. And we were living in an RV with five of us. My daughters were miserable. That wasn't their dad. They did not like him at all. He was always drinking. So I was left with no choice. I mean, I, I would never put my, you know, a man before my kids. So I left with nothing but a bag of clothes. I still, once again, didn't run back to Jesus because I felt like, I mean, he couldn't rescue me. I didn't, I, I was too damaged. I was too broken. Like, what could he do for me? Um, so I just ran to despair. So then I found myself diving deeper into drugs, ended up losing my children. They were with my parents for six years. So um, I had nowhere to go. I slept outside in abandoned buildings, cars. It was nothing, <laughs> nothing like I was, like I imagined it to be, um, how I wanted it to be, what was, what I expected God wanted from me. That kind of made me feel that, you know, maybe he has forsaken me, maybe he has left. 1993 came and uh, I tried to escape Cuba for the first time, where we tried to swim from Santiago de Cuba to Guantanamo base, and uh, we didn't make it. <clears throat> the, that night, well, the storm was called the Century Storm. It was a pretty bad storm and we were swimming in the ocean. It was really a miracle. Even though I didn't believe in miracles, there is somebody upstairs who like us because there's no human being that can make it this landing and be alive. So I watched uh, the Lee Strobel uh, movie, A Case for Christ, read the book, If Christ Was Crucified, and he 
uh, rose from the dead in three days, and there's all kind of evidence from even non-Christian of the time, Roman historians, Jewish historians, uh, in, in all the gospels, the multiple people who testified to it. If this happened, clearly he beat death. Only God could do this. So then I spent a year just uh, reading the Bible myself. It still took me a while. I felt I don't belong in a church. I wouldn't know how to operate. Uh, I don't know everything about a church. It was 2004 after several attempts that failed. I tried to come to the States in a catamaran. The U.S. Coast Guard caught us 15 miles away from Marathon Key. They turned us around. My mom didn't know anything about me for six days, so she thought I was dead. So that Sunday, she goes to church, and uh, she's praying, and she starts crying because she loves me and she doesn't want to lose me. So this couple walks by her, and they ask her, hey, Lourdes, what's, what's going on? And she told them the story, and at the end, they told her uh, how much you need to bring him to the States. And she said $8,000. And they gave her the $8,000. She told them, we will pay you as soon as he comes. And they say, no, because if you do that, you're going to take the blessing away from us. My adopted mom is Joy Yango, and my adopted dad is Takwe Yango. Actually, my mom, Joy, is actually my father's youngest sister. So she's actually my aunt who has adopted us into the family, yes. So, but with the way the Cameroon system is, they're so sluggish i hope this doesn't go on the news because <laughs> someone hears that i think i'm really sluggish but like they kept dragging the whole process so this adoption process took like five years it was the best decision my family could think of to secure us a good future um, we'll be able to go to college coming here was not easy because um I, my husband having I had a reverse cultural shock it's completely different from the place I grew up. From there, we moved to my sister. She has an apartment that she was renting out. And for the last two years, we've lived there and put our lives back together. Finally, my sister, she started attending Second Baptist Church. And she was like, please come. Like, this, the children's program, the youth program is amazing. Like, she's like, just try it at least for your kids. Like, I just had my breaking point. I was like, OK, I got to see who this person is. I, got, I, I need to find Jesus. Like, if there's hope in him, then I need hope. We moved to Texas with the idea of driving uh, semis. And then um, we didn't have a church. And we started looking for a church. A friend of my wife's niece goes to the second. And she took my wife a couple times, and she said to me, you have to listen to this pastor. Whenever you do have kids, things do change. And I became a little more paranoid. And that's where I started saying, hey, I need a little more faith. You know, I believe, but I need more faith to help push me through because the paranoia, I was just seeing all the stuff going on. And you know, we both wanted the same thing. We both wanted a family. We both wanted faith. And I just remember we, we were just walking, taking a family walk in July. And I was just walking and pray, say, God, please help us find a spiritual family. And right before we uh, got home, we met with uh, a member from Second Baptist Church, and he invited us first time, and then invited us second time, and third time, and fourth. We finally said, okay, we'll go. Our parents go to second. Joy and Southway. So I remember when we went to the uh, main service, it was exciting coming here. Most people back home dream about America. The very first Sunday we came to Second Baptist, this is not what I thought it was gonna be like. Everybody here is so welcoming. It was a very different experience. It felt more welcoming. I really liked it. It was amazing. When I was in the um, shelter, they uh, ended up charting us to, um, to the church. And I remember, me and my girls, we got off the bus and you just seen all these people and kids and adults and they're just standing in line and just clapping for us. It was called um, Angels of Light. It was so amazing. It was, it was really heartwarming. And um, after the Angels of Light, I um, came to a church service that Sunday. I remember I sat up on the front row and I was just broken. And so I stood up and went and signed up to be a member. 
Chris and I decided, hey, we want to get them in a program where a good kids program to give them a foundation, something they can rely on. First of all, we asked around some friends and some weren't Baptist, but we always got led in the same direction. They always told us, you know, I hear that that Baptist program is really exceptional for the kids. It's one of the best ones around. Went to a Christmas Eve service, uh, December 2021. Uh, and, and when they had the call uh, at the end, I, I was ready. I just felt the Holy Spirit like, this is, this is where I'm supposed to be. I, I've investigated it. I, I'm sure this is real. Christ died uh, for everybody's sins, including mine. He rose from the dead. That's beyond dispute. Uh, and I went up and accepted Christ and, uh, at second. And it, it's just been a great blessing in my life. We were our oldest son, who was at that time a kindergartner, maybe first grader at Second Baptist School. We were at something like the Christmas Chapel or one of the events that the little kids do, and usually a pastor comes out and there's a message or a talk, and he's speaking to six-year-olds and talking about Jesus and faith in that language. And I, I started to realize as our son would come home and we would practice his Bible verses and I would hear the pastor talk to six-year-olds about what it meant to be a Christian, I was having moments of recognition like, oh, that's what that means. I've literally heard that since I was six years old, but it was taking me until my early 30s to start to understand certain basic truths of what Christianity is. And I, ne I almost needed to hear it in words packaged for tiny children. Even though our kids had been at second at that time for six or seven years, I was, I needed to reach out for help to understand Christianity. We were just at that point and I literally just went to the church website and clicked, I would like to learn more about the church, the, the digital altar call, even though we'd been around here for six years at that point. Sometimes you meet people that say, you don't need to go to church to be a Christian. I mean, there's plenty of people who say that, but that's a lie. You really need the family. It's, it's an experience that you, you come to need. I, I've been on the road for three weeks. And I told my wife, I need to go home because we need to go to church. I finally filled the, the card that is behind the, the seat. Really what we need is the worship and the Word of God. And I felt like we were in a place where our whole family can grow, not just my husband and I, but our children just loves and adores the children's program. I think it was, I want to say vicariously through our kids as we figured out that second was the place to be for us. We love going to church on Sundays. It's not a task. We, we love the way we feel when we leave. You actually feel like you're taking something that you can apply on a daily basis. Like it was almost too good to be true when we first, you know, how warm it is. It just and, embraces and you. It just embraces you. And, and to me, you can only fake it so long. And it has to be real. Everyone was so excited. You know, it just, it just really gave that reassurance like, this is a good place. Even if I go to another country, I'm gonna look for another Second Baptist Church to go to. <laughs> Same. There was no pressure that he recommended I join the Bible study, and that kind of had a smaller group setting, got to know some people. And again, there was no pressure, but the more I went, I could see Christ working on my uh, behavior internally. I became a different person. There's a lot. I'm a flawed human being sinner. Uh, a lot more work to be done. But I could already see this is beginning to change the way I behave, the way I look at the the world, the way I interact with other people, and I was just feeling this growth inside. So one day I got a phone call from the youth pastor, and he was just inviting me to come meet with him and to talk to him and kind of hear my story. And he asked us if we wanted to be saved, and he asked us if we wanted to get baptized. I was tired of being broken and lost, and I just wanted to start a new life. I was very excited, and I knew that I wanted my daughters to experience this with me, and it was the most special thing in my life to be able to be baptized with them. It felt different. Like it just felt like like something like something changed inside of me my, and my family. I'm very happy that mom and dad did for us was sent us to Beach Retreat. That was the best gift. Made me say to myself, I have been off track all this time. And I wanted to restart. So I wanted to make things right. So I had discovered that I had, dis I had decided to get baptized. Faith too, it's like we had gone through, she felt the exact same thing. Eventually it became clear I, I absolutely wanted to get baptized as 
an expression to everyone, and especially my kids. I thought a lot about I wanted my kids to see dad experience that and and very publicly declare you know, where my faith is. And I just uh, felt this is the right path. Uh, I'm born again, and a new sense of peace and purpose, and uh, I'm very happy I took that step. You know, that one day, we just knew it was the right thing to do, and kind of leaned over to her, and I said, hey, let's do it today. Let's get up and let's walk. I said, I'm ready, are you ready? And she said, yeah, I'm ready. I kind of feel relieved, like a different person to know that we we're all like just renewed as a family and that we were going to start a new journey together. And it felt like a new beginning. It felt like a new person. I really felt, I mean, you can just tell just, I mean, watching the video of it, that it's, it's one of the best things that I've done. And I can honestly say that. When he got baptized, our oldest son, Luke, had also made the decision to get baptized. And so they did that together. And that was just a very, very special moment. So seeing them in there together. So my wife, uh, you know, she was raised Hindu. Her father, who lives in Katy as well, he's a priest at a local Hindu temple. She doesn't stop me from doing this. She clearly sees that I'm serious about this. And I brought the kids to some events, but uh, they're not uh, formally Christian. So uh, I just pray in time. You know, with God, everything is possible. So I'm hoping in time, as they see my behavior and my faith grow, and with God's blessing, they'll come along at their own pace. When I think about my life now, I think the best country in the history of human beings is the United States of America. This country was a gift from God. I've been here almost 20 years and still I do not understand my freedom. You can worship, you can, you can pray, you can be a Christian free. I mean, the freedom is not just that you are a Christian, but because you can be a Christian freely, openly, and nobody can condemn you. Surrendering to Jesus and God and God's plan has brought me a lot of peace. Um, and having that recognition and awareness has been a significant change in my life. I see my life starting to go down the path where it was supposed to have been. We're just a happier family. There's no more yelling. There's no more anger. Um, I think we're all just healing and, and growing in our faith. He's provided us hope as a family. He's provided us guidance as a family. You know, I may have not uh, have always been there for him or with him, but at the very end of the day, I know he's always been there with me. I, I just can't imagine without Jesus, where would I be? I certainly never want to go back to that black hole. And uh, I certainly can't take up the cross and I can't walk the life. I can't do my job. I can't be a good wife, can't be a good mom without Jesus. So he's everything to me. I just love telling other single moms that there is hope and that he's there for you and that he will get you through anything. And so yes, my life is insanely different it's i mean it's amazing it's beautiful and i mean there's so much redemption and it's really truly beauty from ashes there's nothing but great things to come i don't know god will use me somehow some way to help share his word and i can't wait it's the fact that he has never forgotten me it just took me some time to realize that he's not just never gonna let me go jesus is everything i would not be alive right now if it would have been for jesus literally how to say this in English, the, uh, the, the, the core or the force that keep us together is Jesus. Our life without Jesus is nothing. <laughs>